You are watching the sun rise over San Francisco's skyline. This is an artificial sun and an artificial skyline. For we are in the California Academy of Sciences, Alexander F. Morrison Planetarium in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park. For centuries, man has tried to duplicate the heavens. This is it. This is the first major planetarium ever designed and constructed in America. This instrument behind us is the planetarium projector. This instrument will duplicate the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars. We're going to find out how it works, just what is inside of it, and what it will do to help further man's education. We'd like you to meet now the man who is controlling this instrument at this panel board, Mr. Leon Salonave, right? Right, Sandy. We'd like to ask you, Leon, uh, just what the purpose of a planetarium is. Well, a planetarium is a sky indoors. We can put the sun, the moon, the planets, and 3,800 stars up there on that dome, and it's so realistic that people swear it's a clear night outside. And we can give a whole show of astronomy and stars, constellations, inside, and it's all very comfortable and very entertaining. What are the various motions that you show with this projector? Well, we can take you in different parts of the world by flipping what we call the latitude switch. You're now going from San Francisco up into Canada as that near end goes up. On the other hand, by flicking the switch the other way, we can take you down past the city onto Mexico and the tropics. If we keep on going, we'll end up in Australia. Then we can take you in time, forward and back, another flick of a switch makes the day speed along at about 24 hours per one minute and a quarter. And if we're not satisfied with time going forward at a fast clip, we can just turn the thing around and make time go backward. It's all the same here in the planetarium. It's amazing what you can do with this instrument. Uh, what are the various motions, uh, how many are there that actually are, that we see, let's say, uh, on a summer night? Well, as I just said, there's the latitude change, which means we can take you in different parts of the Earth. That's one. That's one. And we can make the day go by. That's the daily motion. Two. And we can make the year fly by at a very rapid clip, make the sun go through its seasonal changes. That's three. And then by means of a, third, a fourth switch, we can make the stars look as they did in the times when the pyramids were built or thousands of years from now. So that sums it up, four different motions. Uh, how does this further man's education as far as the future? You mentioned that you can show the planets or the stars in their future positions. What knowledge does that give us? Well, nothing that we couldn't get out of books because that's where the whole thing came from out of astronomy calculations. But most people can't read the books, but they can all come and enjoy the planetarium. So you might say it gives them a better appreciation of astronomy, what it's all about this world around us and so forth. It's purely education. There's no research value in this instrument. It's just to make people more aware of the universe around them and entertain them. We think we can give them a good show as well as teaching them a little bit. Certainly that. Let me ask you what the hours are for attendance here. We have shows regularly at 3.30, 7.30 and 9 every day except Monday and Tuesday. On Saturdays and Sundays and holidays, we have an extra show at 2 o'clock. Well, thank you, Leon. We're going to get back to you in a moment. But now, we'd like you to meet the man who worked on this, who designed it. His name is Jimmy Getton. I pronounce your name right, sir. Yes, that's right. Uh, we'd like to ask you about uh, this instrument, how one goes about designing such a thing. <clears throat> well, all we had to go on... Uh, was a magazine article describing the Zeiss uh, instrument. Uh, Zeiss, uh, made in Germany, furnished the instruments for all the planetariums throughout the world. And uh, since none was available, we had to uh, build our own. We have an instrument shop at the Academy, uh, very well equipped. And we had a head, Dr. Hanna, who understood optics, and who took charge of the project. There were uh, seven of us who worked on it. We've been working four and a half years. Uh, what else? 
can I tell you? Well, let's ask you about some of the statistics. I know they're not dry in this case. Let me ask you what the instrument weighs. Well, the movable part weighs about 5,000 pounds. Uh, the total weight, including the foundation or the base, is about 8,000. Uh, the lenses are of what type? The lenses, the projection lenses, are aerial camera lenses that we were very fortunate in getting through war surplus. <coughs> they were designed as camera lenses, but uh, they make excellent projection lenses. The dome itself is constructed of what kind of material? The dome is of sheet aluminum, and it's perforated with uh, very small, about a sixteenth of an inch in diameter on quarter-inch centers. That's so that the uh, sound will go on through the perforations and be absorbed back of the dome. There are, there are two inches of uh, glass wool, so that there are practically no echoes in the dome. It's uh, hanging in effect much like an umbrella would be. Yes, uh, the sheet metal is uh, fastened to a steel uh, structure like an umbrella, and that in turn is hanging from the concrete dome. It's really floating. About how many parts in the actual projector itself? Uh, we haven't counted them, of course. That would be too big a job. But we estimate uh, roughly 25,000 parts. Uh, I think there are 324 lenses of all descriptions, uh, many ball bearings and gears and uh, miscellaneous parts. I, I can't give you the exact number. How much time did it take you? Well, we have been four and a half years on this. Uh, did I say that seven of us uh, worked on it in the shop? I guess I did, under Dr. Hanna's uh, direction. I, uh, we, uh, we think that our stars are quite realistic. Perhaps an improvement uh, over some of the existing uh, planetariums. And the reason for that is this. There are really two reasons. One is that we use a longer focus projection lens and we don't get the magnification. Uh, we're able to keep the star images down instead of being uh, sizable disks on the dome. Uh, they're practically points, and by using a long focus lens, uh, we don't have the magnification. Another thing, uh, our stars are not circles at all. They're irregular in shape, and uh, that adds to the realism, we think. I understand that six other cities in America have planetarium projectors. Uh, would you give me an idea of how this differs? Well. Uh, fundamentally, they're all the same, uh, all planetarium projectors. They have to be because they have to reproduce the same basic motions. <coughs> uh, we were, uh, as I say, we redesigned uh, it, and uh, we think we have a better distribution of weight because we brought our heavy parts in close to the center, toward the main uh, axis that supports this weight, and the lighter parts are out on the ends. Uh, in that way, we differ from the, uh, from the usual planetarium projector. I see. Well, thank you very much, sir, for giving us the explanation of it. That was Mr. Jimmy Gettin, the man who designed this new Alexander Morrison planetarium projector. Now, Leon, get back to you for a moment. Uh, there were a lot of questions we wanted to ask you. Can you give us briefly some of the technical description on the board here? Well, there are about... 60 switches here, all told, and some of them aren't even connected up, so we have lots of room for growth. But we can produce some, eventually, we can make cloud effects. We can now produce sunrise and sunset with all the beautiful colors. We can put on some of the so-called navigational circles, which are interesting to students. We can keep you straight with the north, east, south, west directions on the compass. And then the whole row here that you see, Someday we're going to be hooked up to produce the constellation projectors. We'll uh, put the big bear in the sky and all the other pictures that people know in the heavens, and we'll do it just with the flick of these switches. And all of this over here is concerned with the speaking and the uh, audio system. We have 13 speakers that you've been listening to right now with all that music, 
and we can use all 13 of them as now, or we can use just the one up above, or by flicking these switches one at a time or two at a time, we can make the music go around the horizon and come from any part of the dome. Those are our sound effects. And besides phonograph and mic, we have tape, so we have a complete audio or sound system in that part. Then these controls in the front panel have to do with what I was talking about there before, the day, changing the day, changing the year, changing the place on the world, the latitude, and then the procession, which means carrying you back thousands of years in time and place. And so that's about it. Oh, Aurora Borealis eventually. We just put in meteors the other day, and a comet's coming along soon. So uh, there's just about nothing that you would want that we can't supply you with. Well, thank you very much, Leon Salome, lecturer here, and the man who controls the board that gives you the effects at the Alexander Morrison Planetarium here at the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park. We have been watching the planetarium projector itself in action and a preview of what you yourself can see when you visit the planetarium here in Golden Gate Park. See you again on Teletrips. Bye.